oil and gas are fueling global conflicts. We live in an energy-centric world where control over oil and gas translates into geopolitical power or cloud for some and economic vulnerability for the others. But raw or unprocessed oil has little value and processing this black gold is of paramount importance. Hello and a warm welcome viewers. You're watching this special presentation of Sunset TV from the Bonga Ingao refinery in Assam. In this edition, I'll take you through unseen, rare and spectacular journey of oil refinery. So come along. Supplying 33% of all energy, oil is the world's primary fuel. In fact, our world would almost grind to a halt without oil. Factories would stop running, so would cars. Airplanes would be grounded. Tractors on the farm would sputter to a standstill and rust. After a pandemic and a price war, sent petroleum prices tumbling in 2020, they are again on the rise. The world may be less dependent on oil now than it was during the energy shocks of the 1970s. But the Ukraine conflict is stark evidence of a stubborn craving that can still disrupt economies, confound policy makers and spark political strife. The preeminence of oil has run in parallel with the massive economic advances made in the 20th century and on into the 21st century. It is estimated that industrial production grew by around 50 times during the last century and that four-fifths of this growth happened in the second half of the century, starting with the reconstruction period after the Second World War. In fact, once oil is extracted from the ground, it must be transported and refined into petroleum products that have any value. Sunset TV visited the eighth largest refinery of Indian oil, Bongaingao Refinery in Assam, to understand the refining process. This refinery has the distinction of being the first indigenous grassroots refinery in the country integrated with a petrochemical complex at one location. At present, the refinery is processing crude available from oil fields of ONGC, Oil India Limited, located in the northeast India, and rubber crude oil from Krishna Godavari Basin off the coast of Andhra Pradesh. The capacity of the refinery was augmented in 1995 to 2.35 million tons per year through expansion of the refinery. India has witnessed a spectacular growth in the refining sector over the years since the first oil refinery was set up in Digboy in Assam in 1901. India's refining capacity could touch 450 to 500 million tons in the next 10 years from the current level of 250 million tons. From a deficit scenario in 2001, the country achieved self-sufficiency in refining and today is a major exporter of quality petroleum products. Today, India is the global refining hub with refining capacity of 248.9 mmTPA and is the fourth largest in the world after the US, China and Russia. There are total 23 refineries in the country 18 in the public sector, 2 in the joint venture and 3 in the private sector, well spread geographically and connected with cross-country pipelines. Refinery configurations in late 1990s were dictated by the product quality upgradation due to environmental considerations. These include lead-free gasoline, low sulfur diesel, fuel oil and other improvements in properties along with the ever-increasing demand for middle distillates. Once discovered, drilled and brought to the Earth's surface, crude oil is transported to a refinery by pipeline, ship or boat. At the refinery, it is treated and converted into consumer and industrial products. 
all refineries have three basic steps separation, conversion, and treatment. During the separation process, the liquids and vapors separate into petroleum components called factions based on their weight and boiling point in distillation units. The first step is to separate the crude oil into its naturally occurring components. This is known as separation and is accomplished by applying heat through a process called distillation. Separation is performed in series of distillation towers with the bottom product from each tower feeding the next. The furnace in front of each distillation tower heats and partly evaporates the feed stream. The vapor and liquid mixture is then fed into the bottom section of the tower. The feed section is the hottest point in the distillation tower and can reach as much as 400 degrees Celsius. Components that are still liquid at this elevated temperature become the tower's bottom product. Components that are in vapor rise up the tower through a series of distillation stages. The temperature decreases as the vapors rise through the tower and the components condense. ये जो आप लोग मेरे विषय देख रहे हैं इस यूनिट का नाम है क्रूड डिस्टिलेशन यूनिट क्रूड डिस्टिलेशन यूनिट किसी भी रिफाइनरी का मदर यूनिट होता है जिसमें से हम लोग प्रोसेस करते हैं रॉ क्रूड को रॉ क्रूड जो ऑयल फील्ड से आते हैं ये इस यूनिट का फीड है और उससे हम लोग डिस्टिलेशन टेक्नोलॉजी का यूज करके उस क्रूड से हम लोग एल पी फ्यूएल गैस नेफ्ता केरो प्रोडक्ट एम और डीजल प्रोड्यूस करते हैं उसके बाद एकदम बॉटम प्रोडक्ट जो है उसको रिड्यूस क्रूड ऑयल बोलते हैं और उसको फिर से एक सेकेंडरी यूनिट डिलेट कोकार यूनिट में हम लोग प्रोसेस करते हैं यही इस यूनिट का बेसिक पर्पज है आफ्टर डिस्टिलेशन हैवी लोअर वैल्यू डिस्टिलेशन फ्रैक्शन कैन बी प्रोसेस फर्दर इन टू लाइटर हाई वैल्यू प्रोडक्ट सच एज गैसिली This is where fractions from the distillation units are transformed into streams that eventually become finished products. The most widely used conversion method is called cracking because it uses heat, pressure, catalyst and sometimes hydrogen to crack heavy hydrocarbon molecules into lighter ones. A cracking unit consists of one or more tall, thick-walled, rocket-shaped reactors and a network of furnaces, heat exchangers and other vessels. और आप लोग जो पीछे देख रहे हैं ये मेन यूनिट हमारी एनर्जी सिक्योरिटी के लिए बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है इसे एम बोलते हैं और सी आर यू यूनिट के थ्रू चलता है और ले मैन लैंग्वेज में बोलें तो ये पेट्रोल यूनिट है जिसका काम यही है कि आम आदमी और खास आदमी जिसके लिए पेट्रोल का निर्माण करना है इसकी फीड हम सी से लेते हैं सी से लेते हैं और उसे प्रोसेस करते हैं कई रिएक्शन के थ्रू पहली यूनिट हमारी रिफॉर्मिंग यूनिट है जिसका काम है रिफॉर्मिंग रिएक्शन करना उसके थ्रू हम हैवी रिफॉर्मेट्स का फॉर्मेशन करते हैं उसके उपरांत हम लोग इसमें आइसोलेट का फॉर्मेशन करते हैं जो कि स्टेट और नेफ्था जिसे हम एस बोलते हैं उसके थ्रू आइसोमराइजेशन रिएक्शन से बनता है इसकी मेन खासियत यही है कि आजकल जो सी और बी की क्वालिटीज़ 91.5 समथिंग रॉन का मेंटेन करना है उसे अप टू डेट हम लोग मेंटेन करते हैं और रेगुलर पैरामीटर के थ्रू मेरा काम यही होता है कि हर शिफ्ट में जो पैरामीटर्स हैं टेम्परेचर है प्रेशर है उन पैरामीटर्स का ध्यान रखना है और उस क्वालिटी को हमें हमें अचीव करना है जो स्टैंडराइज क्वालिटी है ताकि हमारे व्हीकल्स हैं या आम आदमी हैं उसे बेहतर क्वालिटी का प्रोडक्ट मिल सके ऑपरेशनल एंड लॉजिस्टिक स्ट्रेंथ्स एक्ट एज अ फॉल्क्रम टू लेवरेज द एसेट यूटिलाइजेशन एंड ऑप्टिमाइजेशन दीज स्ट्रेंथ्स कपल्ड विद हाली इंटीग्रेटेड प्लांट्स एंड ऑटोमेटेड प्रोसेसेस इंप्रूव ऑपरेटिंग एफिशिएंसीज The central government has mandated that vehicle makers must manufacture and sell and register only BS6 vehicles from April 1, 2020. Indian Oil is the first company to announce the supply of BS6 fuel to its fuel stations across India. Both BS4 and BS6 are emission standards that establish the maximum allowable pollutants emitted from a car. or two wheeler exhaust 
BS6 emission standards are more stringent than BS4 vehicles. Considering the environmental impact, rising pollution levels and health hazards due to vehicular pollution, India will move to the toughest emission standards of BS6. From BS4, skipping the intermediate level of BS5. By switching to BS6, India joins the US, Japan and the European Union, which follow Euro 6 emission norms. BS6 is the Indian equivalent of Euro 6. हमारे यहाँ पे ये DHGT यूनिट है मतलब बेसिकली जहाँ पे डीजल हाइड्रोटिटिंग होता है डीजल हाइड्रोटिटिंग का मतलब है कि बेसिकली हम लोग यहाँ पे हमारा सल्फर और सल्फर रिमूव करते हैं और सी टेन इम्प्रूव करते हैं ताकि ये डीजल हम बी एस स्टैंडर्ड में बाहर पे बेच पाए यहाँ का फीड आ, हमारा सी डी क्रूड डिस्टिलेशन यूनिट से आता है उसके बाद उसको हम सल्फर रिमूव करते हैं बहुत सारा प्रोसेस प्रोसेस पैरामीटर्स है जिसको हम मेनटेन करते हैं मेनटेन करने के बाद हम सल्फर बिलो 8 ppm लाते हैं जो बी एस सिक्स स्टैंडर्ड है अभी का और यहाँ पे इसके डीजल के अलावा ए टी एफ भी प्रोड्यूस होता है जब ए टी एफ का रिक्वायरमेंट होता है तब हम डीजल मोड से ए टी एफ मोड में भी जाते हैं और ए टी एफ भी हम बनाते हैं ए टी एफ मतलब एविएशन टर्बाइन फ्यूल जो हम फ्लाइट में यूज़ होता है इनमैक्स स्टेट ऑफ द आर्ट मेड इन इंडिया टेक्नोलॉजी that is leading to higher profits by providing high yields this technology is also gaining currency in the overseas markets the r&d center developed intpax in-house technology to enhance refinery profit margins by achieving high yields of lpg light oil fins and high octane gasoline from residual petroleum hydrocarbon streams and fractions The efficacy of the technology was first demonstrated by setting up a unit at Guwahati refinery This was followed by the Mega Inmax unit at Paradi refinery in 2015 which placed India in the league of world class refinery process licensors A third Inmax unit was commissioned at Indian Oils Bungaingao refinery ये आप पीछे जो देख रहे हैं ये एफ यूनिट है इंडमैक्स टेक्नोलॉजी है ये ओन इंडियन ऑयल कॉरपोरेशन का टेक्नोलॉजी है एफ का मतलब ये होता है कि फ्लूड कैटलेटिक क्रैकिंग है ये यूनिट में बड़ा बड़ा हाइयर हाइड्रोकार्बन मॉलिक्यूल को हम छोटा 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 मॉलिक्यूल बनाते हैं उससे हम लोगों को जो वैल्यूबल प्रोडक्ट्स होता है सबसे अच्छा प्रोडक्ट है एल उसके बाद पेट्रोल उसके बाद डीजल ये हाइयर मॉलिक्यूल से ये वैल्यूबल प्रोडक्ट्स ये यूनिट बनाता है ये आप जो पीछे देख रहे हैं ये ये यूनिट का सबसे मेन सेक्शन है ये सेक्शन में जो कैटलिस्ट का जो रिएक्शन होता है यही सेक्शन में होता है आप जो पीछे जो लंबा सा एक कॉलम दिख रहे हैं वो कॉलम में सारा सेपरेशन होता है यहाँ पे हाइयर मॉलिक्यूल को छोटा छोटा करता है ये कॉलम में सारा सेपरेशन होता है अभी बाकी सेक्शंस में जाके वो सारा सेपरेट हुआ चीज़ को फिर से हम लोग अलग 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 एल को अलग पेट्रोल को अलग डीजल को अलग हमने सेपरेट करते हैं Furnaces, boilers, gigantic plant, sensitive operations. How are these operations controlled by this control room? Let's find out. The combination of digital instrumentation and process computers has provided refinery management with important tools for achieving top performance in its operations. The maze of complex systems. need regular maintenance and monitoring there are a constant hive of activity and products are constantly flowing in and out of flow systems everything is measured and monitored whether that's crude oil coming into an oil refinery or outgoing products without a reliable flow measurement system in place a refinery really would come to a standstill safe and efficient flow measurement is necessary particularly in high risk environments such as oil refineries where gas flares and other hazards can occur from here we are controlling uh, five units parameters say indmax uh, sru hgu dgt uh, prime g 
and uh, as you know uh, this is a chemical industry uh, we are processing uh, different feed stocks and we are giving products and we have to control the uh, various parameters say pressure temperature level and all that uh, we have uh, analysis also there is no need to go to the field all the parameters are monitored and controlled from the uh, distributed control system over here it is not actually difficult uh, in 21st century it has become very robust uh, controlling from the main control station uh, in our uh, in the old days uh, there were a single loop control system it was very difficult but nowadays it has become very user friendly India is the next largest contributor of Asia's crude oil refining capacity after China. The country is expected to contribute 15% of Asia's crude oil refining capacity by 2023. The booming automobile and aviation sectors, fast urbanization and growing use of liquefied petroleum gas for cooking are the major drivers for refined products in the country. India's peak oil demand will come much later than what the rest of the world might anticipate. Creating enough room to pursue refinery expansions and secure crude supplies through diversification drives. the gas sector is among the eight core industries in India. As our GDP numbers are growing, so is our refining capacity. Well, that's all we had for you in this edition from the Bongai Gao Refinery. With camera persons Junedik Bal Khan, Nilesh Pandey and camera assistant Sunil Paswan, I'm Kriti Mishra signing off.